Hi, I'm Antonio Campos, and I'm the director of The Devil All the Time. So we're about two-thirds of the way into the movie. Um, we're entering the third act. And Arvin has been spying on this preacher and has figured out that he did something to his stepsister. And so he is coming to get revenge. And, and one of the things I wanted to convey in this scene is that Arvin isn't a killer. He comes in with the intent of killing him, and in the moment when he's going to shoot, he gets nervous. And he sits down, and he's got to muster up the courage to go through with the act. He's a violent kid, but he's not a killer yet. And so what, we, what I wanted to do was I wanted to try and give you two perspectives in this scene. One, from the perspective of Tea Garden, talking to this young man that's come in. You got time for a sinner. Who uh, wants to confess, get something off his chest. And the other, in close-up on Arvin's face, where we are with Arvin. We are, we're with him. We're seeing that he's nervous and that he's a little anxious. I've done lustful acts. So we get this angle here, this close-up angle, and that's, that's, that's where we're kind of like, we're in it with him, and we, we get to see into his eyes. And then there's the frontal angle. And the frontal, we're withholding his eyes. We're seeing it the way that Tea Garden sees him. Um, the other thing there is this little technical thing is, um, Tea Garden has seen Arvin in church uh, with his grandmother and with his stepsister, but, uh, but with this hat on and the angle that he's looking at him, um, he, he can't quite identify him. So that's the other reason why this wardrobe was really important for the scene. This is by far my favorite scene in the whole movie. And I was so excited for these two characters to come together and for this force of good and this force of evil to finally meet. And it's the beginning of sort of what becomes Arvin coming up against a lot of different evil forces in the story. It's a very long scene. So we really wanted you to feel every single beat. And so this scene took about, I think we edited this scene on and off for about nine months. One day I got this girl in my truck and I drove her out to the sticks and I had my way with her. She put up a fight. No. And it was really about trying to capture every single detail that these two great actors gave us. I really think that Tom Holland is like the greatest actor of his generation. And I think, I think he's so natural and he conveys such a, a wonderful humanity, but still manages to capture this kind of danger. And that Rob Pattinson is this kind of mad genius. And you don't know what he's going to give you um, on the day. And, and so I had this wonderful footage to work with. And it was really about trying to nail every little micro expression, every gesture. And, and by doing that, we create this kind of, we start building up the tension, you know, to the point where then Arvin stands up. And with standing up, he reveals his eyes and reveals his identity to Tea Garden. I've been watching your every move for the last couple weeks. You can't get enough of that reister girl, can you? Is that how you did my Lenore too? And this kind of face off here was really, this is where it kind of like really finely tuned the editing to make sure that every, every little gesture once the gun reveal itself, is dangerous for Tea Garden. Don't do anything you'll regret, son. Why don't you put the gun down and make him talk all about it? So we really wanted to kind of highlight each beat and feel every time that Tom kind of gets worked up and, and Tea Garden gets scared. In the sound design here, you really kind of hear the, the rattle of the gun. We just like this, uh, this racer girl. You get the shake of Arvin's hand 
through the sound of the gun rattling, which is like one of these things that we didn't plan on, but when we got into the mix, you really kind of, you, you realize you needed a sound to convey that sort of nervousness, to heighten the nervousness. Well, look, I, I, I didn't have nothing to do with that. And then, you know, you get this, the, this sort of like, this anger building up. So now Arvin, who came into the scene so, so nervous to go through with the act, um, is now getting angrier and angrier and angrier. And he's, and, and, and he's building up the courage to either shoot or, or not shoot. Um, we don't know yet. We don't know if he's going to change his mind, if T. Garden's going to manage to talk his way out of it. I ain't going to take the blame for no bastard child. It would ruin me, man. My wife is the editor, Sofia Supercasso, and she and I always, like, loved every one of uh, Rob's deliveries here. She was delusional. She's crazy. Let's see. Oh, she was just lonely. <laughs> 